For most farmers involved in animal production, it is fundamental to manage livestock fertility. And that is because a lot of farmers use breeding stock to produce offspring in which they grow out uh, and then sell. So that's exactly what we'll be talking about uh, today in this video. We'll be talking about how we can maximize fertility uh, from our animals so that we can maximize uh, production and maximize profitability. My name is Teal Simmons from AgriSol uh, and this is Agriculture Explained. Fertility contributes to the number, weight and health of the offspring produced. So it's not always about the number of calves produced per um, cow, but perhaps it's the starting weight. And a larger starting weight can result in a larger mature animal. For example, let's say we have a farm with a carry capacity of 100 sheep. Now for simplicity, let's say that all the sheep are treated equally for their nutritional requirements. Now, even though this is um, not true in the real world, for the, uh, for the example, we're gonna say it is. So let's say each sheep can produce one lamb each. That means that we need 50 ewes to produce um, 50 lambs, which will fulfill our carry capacity. And then maybe a couple of rams too. But let's say we worked on the fertility of our ewes so that they could produce two lambs each. That means we could reduce the number of ewes we have on our farm to 33 ewes, and then they could produce 66 lambs. This would ultimately increase production as we've reduced the amount of uh, mouths we need to uh, feed from the ewes, and we can use the extra feed to feed more lambs. So we have not only increased production by increasing the amount of lambs that we can produce um, on our farm, but we've also increased um, profitability. And so the total price that we spend on the ewes decreases while increasing the production of lambs. So the more fertile an animal, the less you need of that animal or the breeding stock to produce the same amount of the offspring. So how can we do this? Well, there's five main factors that limit fertility. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're also going to talk about what we can do to these different factors um, to overcome these limitations and hence improve our production. So first we have genetics. Genetics can limit our fertility or you can increase our fertility. So there's three main ways this can occur. So between animal types, so for example, um, pigs can have very large litters, um, 10, 15, even 20, whereas cows only produce one um, calf a year. But we can also have difference between our breeds. So different breeds of pigs or sheep can produce more or less offspring. So then we also have differences within a breed. So that just might be uh, the difference between breeding stock, um, choosing a better ram or a, a better bull and to produce um, better offspring. So what we can do, we can change the genetics of the animals on our farm to increase fertility. So we can do this with changing the animal types. So say going from um, pigs to uh, cattle. So this change is generally hard, mainly because the operation that you run is more dependent on your land. So the class of land and the fertility of the land itself, as well as the climate. So changing animal types, unless you um, already have an operation that really doesn't suit that land and you, and you should be changing to um, a different uh, enterprise, that one we probably shouldn't uh, consider too much. Next, what we can do is we can change our breeds. Now, this will probably yield the um, most significant improvements to our farm, but first we need to consider uh, different factors that different breeds will bring and how these factors will affect our enterprise. So for example, if we're running beef cattle, uh, we're not gonna go change to dairy cattle because we want an increased chance of twins. But what we might do is change to some Boss Indius cattle, which are more suited to warmer, more tropic uh, climates. Say if our farm was in an uh, environment like that. But say we have the best breeds that we can uh, pick for our farm. Next, what we've got to do is um, select breeding stock, which have superior genetics to other breeding stock within that breed. So we can do that by um, buying cattle or buying breeding stock based on their um, estimated breeding value, which is a table with all the um, breeding values of a particular uh, animal. And then we can select the best uh, performing stock based for our operation, and then use that stock for um, producing offspring. What we can also do is we can always select the best breeders in our operation to breed from uh, to gain more breeding stock. And so over time, this will um, help to improve the production by selecting more fertile animals. Now, genetics is great, um, but genetics act as almost a um, capacity measurement for our operation. They set the maximum limit for production. So sometimes it's better to focus on our other factors before we consider genetics, just because changing genetics of your whole herd might be really expensive and changing maybe a little bit uh, of their nutritional intake can get 
um, more significant yields. So from there, we should consider nutrition. Now, nutrition plays a massive role in fertility. Essentially, poor nutrition leads to poor fertility. And that might have uh, nothing to do with the genetics of the animal, but everything to do with how these genetics are expressed. Because remember, our phenotype, or the expressions um, that we make, are a function or are a result of our genetics and our environment, which includes our nutrition. So poor nutrition in animals can lead to um, irregular cycling, reduced ovulation or weak uh, offspring, and sometimes even pr um, problems during pregnancy. And that's in females. And in males, it can lead to poor quality and quantity of sperm. So therefore, making sure that our livestock get the correct nutrition is critical for allowing them to op operate correctly for reproduction. And we can do this by feeding them a correctly formulated diet uh, of proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals uh, and fiber and depending on your operation uh, will depend on how i guess you check on that if you're running cattle in a uh, pasture we really want to take samples of the pasture and make sure it has everything and if not we can supply them with uh, minerals um, in supplemented feed or if your operation is more of a feedlot you can make sure that you're um, supplying the livestock with correct nutrition and that can be checked with a um, animal nutritionist so there's some other techniques that we can use nutrition for. The first one is called flushing, and that's where we increase the feed uh, given to a female animal before they ovulate. And essentially what will this will do is increase the amount of eggs released. Now this is mostly helpful in uh, sheep or pig production, where generally they have fairly larger um, litter sizes. Another technique is called steaming up, uh, and that's where females are given an increase in feed in the later stages of pregnancy, and that will result in a increased birth weight uh, and milk production. Now, the environment that our animals are in can also affect their fertility. So for example, daylight uh, can affect fertility of some animals, such as horses, sheep, goat, and poultry, as these animals are seasonally polyosterous, which means they only mate during certain times of the year. Now, these animals have developed that uh, due to evolution to ensure that their offspring are born in particular times of the year and to ensure the, the maximum chance of survival. So other environmental factors can include uh, temperature. So a too high body temperature can cause for poor uh, sperm quality in males or reduced ovulation in females. And this will ultimately reduce conception rates. So for example, some animals that really struggle with heat, such as pigs, they can get um, summer infertility where they reduce their ovulation rates um, during summer and then uh, three months and three weeks later, you get a decrease in um, pig production. So it's really important that we keep our animals in an environment that they really like and um, supply them with um, lots of shade and shelter to overcome uh, these environmental factors. Well, another way we can overcome them is to ensure that we get a breed of animal that is well suited to the climate of our area. So for example, those Boss Indias cows are really suited to tropical hot environments such as Northern Queensland. Next, we've got pest and disease. Now, this is also a very significant factor and it's more so a um, diminishing factor than any of the other ones. When a animal gets uh, sick, it can cause for them to reduce their fertility. So a disease can cause a reduction in fertility. For example, uh, it can stop uh, sperm production or egg production. It can also cause for abortion in uh, pregnant animals as well as uh, reduce the health of the fetus. Now this will ultimately um, lower the birth rate or lower the chance of survival. Our last factor is very dependent on the farmer and their knowledge of the uh, operation that they're running, and it is management. So management pretty much takes into the decision-making that affects all of our other factors. So the management will allow us to alter different um, factors of our operation. It can change our genetics, um, so changing the breeds or um, picking better breeding stock. It can change the nutrition for our animals. We can uh, introduce different vaccination programs or worming programs uh, and we can change the environment for our animals uh, or change the breed to have um, more suited to the environment. So essentially it allows us to mitigate or change different factors for our farm which will allow us to increase fertility. So as we talked about before with the nutrition we can uh, use the technique of flushing uh, or streaming up. We can also change uh, the breeds of our animals. We can also have the vaccination and worming programs to mitigate against pest and disease, as well as introducing integrated pest managements uh, to control different pests. 
We can also change the uh, male to female ratios to ensure um, an increase in conception rate. And we can also change the layer of our paddocks to make sure we reduce environmental stress. So we can do all of that as farmers or managers of our um, land to ensure that we can increase um, the fertility of our livestock. So there we have it. They are the five factors that limit fertility on our farms and how we can overcome those to increase our uh, production, our yield, and most importantly, the profitability of our farm. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out some of our other videos. We've got some more on animal production, we have some on plant production, and have some on regenerative agriculture. So make sure to check that out. My name is Till Simmons from Agrisol, uh, and this is Agriculture Explained.